I want you all to think about a time when you had the least burdens or worries in your life. I'm guessing most of you are having flashbacks about your childhood. That was the case for me as well. That's me when I was about two years old. I know. Ah, <laughs> but think about it. As children, we didn't have a lot to worry about. Not enough money. Who cared when we had all the dirt in the world to play with? Not enough luxury. Who wanted all that when we could just lie down on our mother's lap while she gently caressed our hair? Not enough fame. Who wished for all that when we could get all the love from the people around us, including our relatives who now annoy us? <laughs> And then what happened as we grew up? Life happened. The more we started gaining clarity about life and its so-called norms and rules, the more we started losing ourselves. As we grew up into this responsibility-holding, goal-addicted, envy-filled, distraction-hungry adults, we forgot who we were and what we really wanted from our lives. And as adults. We now have a complete sense of what we want to do, and yet we are lost. This, my dear friends, is the irony of life. I was about 20 when I started believing I was on a mission. I started to focus on goals and achieve them, one milestone and then the next and then the next. I became an engineer, landed a good job, married a beautiful person inside and out. The one sitting right here. Hi, Devangi. <laughs> I then started a business, built an amazing team, got the business flourishing, and then started another business. I felt there was nothing in my life that I could not do, and yet I felt that there was so much more I wanted to. And that's when I realized the ugly truth: my goals were actually being triggered by someone else. I wasn't really sure if this is what I wanted to do in my life, and that's when I hit pause. I started asking these important questions to myself: How do we go about choosing what we do in our lives? How do we even decide what becomes of us? And this is what I got. We all start with an intent to do something. We take up the first or the second opportunity that comes along our way, but most of the time we do it for the money. And when we keep doing that same thing every day, We become professionals at it, and when we are professionals at it, we don't know what we are doing. We just continue doing that every day. For some of us, this professionalism turns into passion. We start enjoying what we are doing. We start enjoying what we are doing, and then we fall into it. Work doesn't feel like work anymore because we start enjoying it. We can see passionate people everywhere. Just look at a farmer working his field, or a teacher spreading knowledge, or even a soldier ready to serve the nation. They have the most beautiful smiles on their faces because they're really passionate about what they do. Even fewer of us reach a point of purpose where believe where we believe what we are doing is what we are meant to do all our lives. And the irony here is that we don't do what we do for the sake of money anymore. My favorite example here is that of Dr. Kalam. For him, life became about spreading knowledge, and he even passed away while doing that. I'm going to give you all a moment to think about where you stand: intent, professionalism, passion, or purpose. Most of us feel stuck here, being professionals at what we do. Not because we get into a comfort zone, no, but because we are scared, scared of losing those securities that we feel we need in our life. You see, when we become professional at something, we start earning money. But most of the time, we are not happy doing it. But we need the money, <laughs> and in search of happiness, we start distracting ourselves. And when these distracting distractions are not distracting enough, we get into more bigger distractions, and that in turn requires us to make more money. 
and when we need more money, we try to become more professionals. And finally, happiness becomes more and more elusive. Trust me, it's a vicious cycle. And the only way to get out of the cycle is to understand that money was and will always be only a byproduct of what we do. And these distractions are what our mind needs, not what our heart wants. What our heart wants or what we really need as human beings is purpose. Let's imagine just for a moment, in searching for our intent, we start with purpose. And then from this purpose comes our passion. And when we are passionate about something, it's easy for us to push ourselves to become professionals at it. And then we do that with a lot of intent. Understand this. Intent, per professionalism, passion, purpose. This is how we live our lives. And most of us don't even reach the top. And that's why purpose, passion, professionalism, and intent. This is how we are meant to live. I know some of you are wondering, isn't intent required to find our purpose? I mean, how do I even find my purpose if I don't try different things, right? But to that point, I just want to point out that our passion is not altogether difficult to find for most of us. We just need to give ourselves the freedom to observe. Because passion, purpose is something that comes to us naturally. Have we not seen people do things without even thinking about it? Yes? Like taking care of nature or animals, or doing something adventurous every day, or exploring new places every week, or innovating something, or serving the community as if they were one of their own. Have we not seen people like this in our lives? Do you not find something that you want to do that gives you a lot of happiness? If that is not purpose, then what is? Remember this. The problem is not in finding the purpose. The problem is in living it. Let me explain this part by narrating a small story about one of my friends from college. We used to call him Pipe. <laughs> and I'm going to stick to that name today. Pipe was one of those people who loved the way the world it was. He used to love taking care of stray animals. He used to go out and enjoy a day in the wilderness. And sometimes he will just pack his bag and go out for a trek as if he's going out for a coffee. All of us have met a pipe in our lives, yes or no? <laughs> Over time, Pipe became passionate about the environment. He wanted to conserve it. Maybe he found a purpose. He used to go to rallies, conferences, and what not, just to follow his purpose. But then life hit him. He decided to do his masters in the US and went on to work for one of the biggest companies there. He was paid well, and he liked this job. But the problem was that he had to be in the office for more than 100 hours a week. He didn't have time to pursue his purpose. And he decided to break the cycle and finally started to look for other jobs. He got another opportunity at a company which was consciously working towards the environment and one that would give him the time and freedom to do something else as well. But here's the catch. If he joined that company, he had to take a 25% pay cut. He was standing at a road. One led to a place where he would get a lot of money, but would take away his freedom. And the other one would give him a life that he always wanted. Now let's imagine all of us are standing right at this road. This is what our mind would tell us. Oh, but I need this, I need that. What will, I, my even, what will even my aunt, sister's obnoxious husband say? How will I take that international trip every year? Or how will I survive without that latest 14th version of my phone, where everything is the same, but the camera has been moved by an inch? <laughs> 
If these are the questions that stop us from following our purpose, then don't you agree with me that there's something wrong there? Pipe took up that low-paying job, but the more important question is, how many of us would? I repeat, the problem is not in finding our purpose, the problem is in living it. <sighs> Understand this. And before I go, I want to address this one line that maybe your mind is telling you again and again and again. And maybe you want to tell that line to me as well. Sagar, bolna asan hai. <laughs> it's easier said than done, Sagar. I do agree. Saying something and doing something are two different things. And forgive me if I'm wrong, but not once in my speech did I ever say that this was easy. And when did life ever become easy? We slog every single day only to feel bad about it towards the end of the week. Is that easy? We don't even understand what we are trying to achieve except for the big CTC number. Is that easy? We keep putting unnecessary pressure on ourselves, waiting for a heart attack to make us realize the importance of life. Is that easy? It certainly isn't. And if some of you are wondering what happened to my life, it took me some time, but when I kept following my purpose, it took me to beautiful places. And one of them is where I'm standing right now. Take it from me and my struggles. Life will throw many shades at you. Some you will thrive at, some will give you painstakingly difficult lessons but you will finally realize that life is about living a journey that's yours, even if it's different, because each and every one of us is unique, just like 50 shades of pink. <laughs>